There have been 862 episodes of Doctor Who broadcast to date. My mission, for every single one, say something nice. Hello dear viewers and welcome back to another episode of Say Something Nice. We're sticking with the Sylvester McCoy era for Survival Part 1. With 5 million viewers, this was the first episode of the last Doctor Who story, and I think it's possibly the most successful all-location Doctor Who story, as the Doctor and Ace run around the streets of Perivale, but also the planet of the Cheetah People. But getting ahead of myself there, because we barely see the planet of the Cheetah People in this episode, I am choosing for this episode, my nice thing, is the appearance of Hale and Pace. Now, as a kid, I grew up watching Hale and Pace's sketch comedy show, which is what they were really famous for. Now, they're brought into Doctor Who as two men who run a corner shop. With some of JNT's stunt casting, he would cast people to their strengths, he'd cast comedians to play comedic roles, but in this case, he's cast comedians to play just everyday roles. But Hale and Pace find the comedy in the lines. I really enjoy their banter and them not quite understanding each other's jokes as well. Apparently they swapped roles shortly before filming and I wonder if that was an effort to keep the script fresh for them because of course freshness is a big part of comedy. If you over rehearse something comedic you lose some of the spontaneity in there. I also think it's a really successful piece of casting because if you don't know who they are, I don't feel the casting is distracting. The story doesn't invite a massive amount of attention to the fact that we've got Hale and Pace. If you're not familiar with their other work, they're just two actors playing these roles. And they're only in this episode, they don't play a big role in the plot. There is an upsetting scene that sort of writes them out if you are a lover of cats. But until then, they're quite funny without subverting the seriousness of the story. And their performances are something really nice about Survival Part 1. Hello dear viewers and welcome back to another week of Say Something Nice. It's a week full of Scottish Doctors, but we're starting off with Survival Part 2. This episode got 4.8 million viewers and it is part of the last ever Doctor Who story. The moment I'm choosing from this episode is when the Doctor and Patterson are on the planet of the Cheetah People, riding along on a horse together, and the Doctor explains to Patterson where they are and what is happening. As opposed to Ghostlight, where I also chose another explanation scene, this one is a bit slower. It's easier to absorb the information. And the funny thing is, despite the fact that it's easier to absorb the information, Patterson still really doesn't quite get it. He's in constant denial throughout this story as to what is happening around him. And the Doctor just has this kind of air of disdain. Like, he's it, yeah, I'm going to explain to you what's happening, but I know you're not going to listen. <laughs> but the Doctor gives him a chance to listen and to understand, and despite all that, <laughs> still works to protect Patterson, make sure he's okay, even though Patterson has his big bravado, like, he's absolutely fine. Uh, it's just a really nice moment. It's a good moment for this Doctor's character. I'm reading the New Adventures novels at the moment, and sometimes this Doctor, in those books, gets a bit too mean, a bit too nasty, a bit too mercenary. Here, you sense his frustration in having to deal with Patterson, but you're left with no doubt that the Doctor will still work to protect him and get him home. And that's something really nice about Survival Part 2. Hello dear viewers and welcome back to another episode of Say Something Nice. And today is sort of an ending. Um, no, this series is an ending. This series has about 800 more episodes to go. But we are talking about Survival Part 3. Survival Part 3, the last episode of Classic Doctor Who, got 5 million viewers. And what I find so nice about this episode is it's all about tying up the story, but not doing it in a really rushed way. It's about the people and the characters that we've come to know over this story. And Russell T Davies has said many times that so much of the DNA of his Doctor Who had its foundations laid towards the end of the Sylvester McCoy era. And we really get that here. 
we're introduced to a bunch of supporting characters in this story, such as Midge, Sheila, Derek, Sergeant Patterson, and this episode gives us endings for each of them. Derek and Sheila, of course, depart very early on in this episode to go home, but there is a beautiful moment from Derek where he is just so happy to be home that he almost deliriously thanks the Doctor. Sheila, of course, says a very quick and quiet goodbye to Ace, and it's not so much lots of big thank you, oh my god, I can't believe I'm home. It's just, I must get home. I must see my family, I must check how they're doing. Patterson, of course, is in complete denial about what is going on, and that leads to his demise. But even that is sort of paid tribute to by the fact that the Doctor and Ace try to save him, and the sorrow on the Doctor's face that this bloviating idiot has been killed. His death is still mourned and noted. And of course, Midge's death is contrasted with Kara's. Midge is killed in the service of the Master, and the Master just basically walks up to him and says, ah well, you failed, time to die. When Kara is killed, Ace is distraught and mourns her death and sits with the body, and it contrasts the responses of the Master and Ace, both of whom have been infected with the cheetah virus, but it makes it clear that it's not the cheetah virus that decides who is more humane and who is more animalistic. It's their actions and their personalities. Now, of course, there is that beautiful speech at the end, but so much has been said about that over the years that I can't add anything meaningful to it beyond the fact that it still brings a tear to my eye to this day, both because it's beautiful in and of itself, but it tells us how much we were robbed in not seeing more of this type of Doctor Who, because they really had got it right by this stage. And I would also like to give an honourable mention to Anthony Ainley as the Master. This is his last televised Doctor Who story. He did return to provide cutscenes for the video game Destiny of the Doctors. He did famously decline to return to the role for Big Finish, which of course left it open for Jeffrey Beavers, who has done amazing work as the crispy master, as people like to call him. But really, this is the curtain call for Anthony Ainley, who was so very proud of the role. He absolutely loved playing the master. You know, several people involved with the show have said Anthony Ainley lived for two things. He lived for cricket, and he lived for playing the master. And this is one of his finest performances in the role. And uh, yeah, I think he's been gone about 16 years now. I think he passed away in 2004. And I think if he was still with us today, he would be chuffed that people are still discovering his performances as the master. So thank you very much, Anthony Anley. Thank you, Sylv. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Rona Munro, for this amazing Doctor Who script. And just the fact that Doctor Who went out on such a high and on an episode that really cares about the people within it is something really nice about Survival Part 3. As always, thank you at home so much for watching. Do keep yourselves safe, wash your hands, and I will see you in the next video.